Hi guys, Ina here and today I have a video about pretty sad orchids or things that I haven't done right for you. So instead of showing you what's working well for me, I'm going to talk to you about the orchids that I'm not doing well or something is not working well for me, I'm not providing the right care in order to have, let's say, a blooming orchid or even maybe a healthier orchid. So maybe you can give me some tips or maybe you learn something as well or just noticing that some of this is happening to yours maybe can give you some idea about what to do with your own orchids. I hope this video is helpful. Before I start diving into the video, I introduce this beautiful Paphiopedon to you. She's called Paphiopedon Mrs. White and it is a hybrid that is very vigorous and beautiful, produces these large, large flowers. And she's gonna be my co-host today. I have another bud here that is going to open soon. And I love Paphiopedlums and some of these hybrids, they bloom yearly for you or maybe more than once a year. For introducing you, my plants that are not performing at their best capacity or potential, I just wanna apologize. So if you want, you can skip this part. I have been away from this channel for the past week. I haven't posted anything, not even something on the community for you to understand. And I'm really, really sorry. I had an extremely hectic, busy week and that I couldn't cope posting videos, producing videos, or even going to YouTube. So I'm really, really, really sorry. Uh, it won't happen again, hopefully. I don't know exactly what to say, just apologizing that I completely disappeared from here. But I'm back <laughs> this week. I have both videos recorded already. So we will be able to explore a little bit of my orchids together. Let's dive in straight into this not so lucky orchid, shall we? <laughs> so the first orchids that I'm showing you here, and I'm giving you one example, but I have many others. But this one is my Bobophyllum Eber, Eber, I'm gonna write the tag here on the screen. The problem with this plant is very specific. It's not only with these Bobophyllums specifically, but with all my Bobophyllums. I have three Bobophyllums that are healthy, mature. This is my oldest one, that's why I'm showing you this one. And it has, I have been, I was able to divide it, each out to grow its pot. I divide it again and it's all healthy in terms of producing new growths. You can see the bulbs and it has plenty of roots inside its pot. However, in, I don't know, three years that I have it and acquired it as a mature plant, it has never bloomed for me and I've never seen even it pushing out a flower spike. It's very weird. So when I was watching videos about orchids and reading about bubophyllums, they're all saying that bubophyllums, they usually live in the shady part of the forest. So they don't like extremely bright light. They do well, some intermediate to low light. So I always kept it let's say at the corner of my shelving where the light the bright brightest light was not on top of it and i thought it was fine but since having it for very very long time and noticed that none of my bubophyllums seems to push out flower spikes but only grow vegetatively i think the issue is light i read something the other day while researching that i may not be offering the right light or the right amount of light so sometimes we think that some orchids, they simply won't do well because, I don't know. I have been fertilizing it and I know that it's healthy because the leaves are plumpy and also the pseudobulbs are large and they have roots inside the pot. If that's the case, what's happening? The only thing that I could probably, that I, I may not be giving to these plants is bright light. The problem is usually they grow very unruly. So I have these like round pots and uh, it's growing around the pot and it's difficult for me to find a bright spot for this one. I've never prioritized the brightest spot for bubophyllums because I always think about my cattleyas or even my oncidiums. I never thought the bubophyllums would need more light. I thought that the light that I offer to my beautiful Paphiopedalums or even my Phelanopsis would be okay. 
but I don't think it is. I think it means more light than that. I don't know why. I don't have exactly a massive experience with Boba Felons. I think I have four in my collection, but yeah, I'm not very lucky with them. Let me know down below if you have experienced the same and how have you, if you managed to fix it and what did you do? I'd love to hear. So next one. I thought this video would be a short video, but I think it's going to be longer than I expected. The next video is about this beauty here. That's my Berioda. It's not in its worst case scenario, but I think I reported it here with you guys. It does have some new growths coming from the base, but most of the old growths died after reporting it. So it was severely set back. That's why this year I'm not expecting any blooms. And what happened with dendrobiums, especially when they got really, really stressed, is they start pushing out cakes. So it's pushing out cakes because this is a very resilient dendrobium, but I managed to set it back. Hey, so we never, that case, especially after reporting, if you mess up with the root system badly, the plants can get very stressed. And then maybe that's what happened to this one. We can lose canes, you know, divisions on the way, and maybe probably most of the roots that were inside this pot. The only new growths that I managed to save were the newest growths, and these ones are the ones that are pushing out cakes and some new growths now as well. I think next year I'm gonna have a healthy plant. I have to be very patient with this one. But on top of that, it got attacked by spider mites as well because dendrobiums are pet magnets. But that's the, the second case. But this one, at least, I think I know how to fix. And if it happened to you before, one thing that you can also do is unpot, remove all the dead divisions and keep the good ones and remove the cakes when they are large enough. They have at least 15 centimeters of long roots. Put them separately and maybe you're gonna have a brand new plant but it will take you a while, probably one year for this plant to be fully recovered. It happened to all of us, I think. So next one. The next plant that I'm gonna talk here, I'm not gonna bring it to the table for any reason because these ones are also past magnets and if I have still some spider mites, it's my living room and not in my bedroom. And these plants, they reside in my bedroom. I've showed one of them, I reported and talked about this. I don't have many videos about catacetans, but I do have only two catacetinii plants. They are not both catacetans, but they are both inside the catacetinii family. Anyway, I have the sick nodes wine delight, and I have the catacetan jumbo something. I'm gonna write the tag here as well. I have both of them. They are doing, they are growing nicely and healthily. It's very similar to the bulbophyllum case. The difference is the mature new growths that were larger than the previous growths, so they have large bulbs, they have long leaves, and that's not the first time that it happened. So they mature a growth, produce the large leaves. The leaves, you probably know the catacetan, they shade their leaves, that's normal. But then when they shade their leaves last time, yeah, when they lost their leaves, they start already sprouting, a new growth starts to sprout. So now they have, each one of them have one, the catacetan, almost a mature bulb, and the other one each has a smaller bulb. No, sorry. One is growing a bulb and the other one has a completely mature bulb. And they are doing super well. They are healthy. I can see that they are growing large and large in size, but they haven't bloomed. None of them. Both of them have produced. That's the second time that they produce a division full of leaves and no bloom. And guess what? These ones, they are sitting under my barinas growing light, both of them, which is great for their vegetative growth, but not for their blooming. I don't think it gives them the bright light that they need in order to produce blooms. Unfortunately, at least not the barinas that I have. So bear that in mind when you buy, I think they may not be suitable for all sorts of orchids. And uh, so next year I'll have to rethink 
because that verena they are able to bloom some dendrobiums um, they push out flower spikes in there even my dendrobium sanuk for any reason not the catasetans so i may have to put them here near the cattleyas next time that they push out a growth to see if they will be able to bloom they are super healthy but i don't know what to do but i think i have to adjust light again i think that's that's the common theme here and i don't have space for all of my bright light orchids for me that's the saddest thing i am able to bloom vandacious orchids some under of this growing light but not catacetan and you know why i'm so mad because i love catacetan orchids i only have two i never spend more money on them because i want to make sure that i know how to grow them and when they are big they they actually fill the space but lots of species are from my country and i find them so wild exotic i really like them but anyway when i'm able to make these two blue then i would think about purchasing more than what i have already so next plants that are not doing so well i already talked to you about it but i'm gonna repeat again is my miltoniopsis um miltoniopsis when you set them back take them a long time to to bounce back as well especially if they lost lots of bulbs roots that all happens so there is a, another common issue here different from the others my miltoniopsis they got severely attacked by thrips uh, and the one that i brought from france it starts losing its growth and on top of that i had spodomite as well but the main reason why they all lost most of their growth and they are struggling a lot was because of thrips so i had to report all of them the ones in my living room that were severely set back i had to add them like inside this humidity chamber because they have very thin leaves and thin roots i i'm hopeful it will help them to store some energy since they will not be losing so much water to the environment and maybe they will still push out some new growths the ones in my living room i'm not showing you now they push out some growths but they are very tiny small so they are not doing their best unfortunately and before i decide to buy more metoniopsis i need to make sure that these ones are taken care of i have to check if they will survive or if you know or maybe i will lose them i don't know i have four at the moment but none of them are doing great so <laughs> two inside humidity chambers the other two push out new growths but they have very tiny growths and i don't see good results so yeah it's been a struggle as well they are not the easiest plant especially when they got attacked by pests pests can destroy miltoniopsis like nothing as well so anyway next plant and the last but not least of <laughs> my list of orchids that could be doing something better or could be blooming for me or could not be struggling so much i don't know i have my phalaenopsis pulcherima i have only one and i have this for a long long time guys this i don't know for how long but maybe as well three years these plants have never done well for me and i've reported many times it has some issues that start pushing out tiny roots on the top of the main stem and these tiny roots they suddenly stop growing and i thought it's humidity i changed the mix i changed how i balance the mix i changed everything related to this one but even so it never push out many roots inside the mix on top of that it's always these tiny roots and it's always a little bit weird the leaves they don't do very well the plant seems to be a little bit wonky i don't know how to explain i don't think i'll be able to see this one blooming i think this one has a serious issue it push out cakes one of the cakes inside of tiny humidity chambers and starts pushing out roots but the roots even there they have these tiny roots they seem not to develop much so i don't know if it's one issue with the plant 
or maybe could be one issue with my care as well. So if I have any tips, I'd love to hear. I think on top of that, my water is more towards a hard water. I don't use osmosis water or I just use tap water because that's what I can do. And I know that some plants may suffer more. If that's the case specifically with this one, I, I'm okay that I will never do better. I will never do good with this because I, there is no way for me to collect water here from like rain water and no way for me as well to anyway it's expensive and to be able to filter you know to remove salts from water so what I can do in my power is to use tap water so that's what I do and it's okay I have a ton of orchids that are doing well but this one I don't know if it's that or if it carries some sort of disease or I'm trying to create theories about why it's not doing well so maybe I can try to fix it. I've tried many times, changing the watering regime, looking into the mix, repotting, changing mix, changing ratio of mix, all of the things that you, and it's still not doing amazingly. And that concludes my list for today. <laughs> I know that's not a super happy and cheery video. I hope we'll have some of these coming in the future, but I wanna talk to you about some of my, yeah, some of the things that I do wrong as well, or some of the things that I'm still discovering or figuring out. I hope that was interesting for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. I'd we'll love to hear more from you. And if you enjoy this type of content, yeah, subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot to help the community to grow. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.